thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about your work on One Piece? What would you Please. like to know? Well, um, as an editor, um, it, just tell us how it's been for you. Um, maybe if there's something in particular you've done on the piece, a scene or an episode that you've worked sure. on that has really been uh, kind of a, a touchstone for you. Well, my, like I said in the panel, my favorite scene that I'm most proud of is Zoro in the web. Uh, these scenes were scripted, shot, directed, any kind. Very winning of uh, They were young Zoro wanting to be the master swordsman. I mean, that's what that's what One Piece is about: achieving the dreams. And uh, he's trying to become the master swordsman. He meets Kumina, they make a pact, and unfortunately, tragedy strikes, and he is to take the mantle and become the master swordsman, really for her. But he's stuck in the well. In present day, we got to know. Hey, these scenes are really good. It's taking some time. What can we do to expedite this, make this more interesting? And what we did was, is we found that if we start intercutting this, we can tell more of the story, linger in more shots, and it's it's creating a lot of tension. And while we were doing this, we discovered in the edit there was all this additional footage that our director had the solo shot of close-ups of Zoro's face and his dead, uh, things of his arm and his hands and it's struggling to get up the well. And we just didn't have a place to put in, in the linear edit. So while we were doing it, we were able to find these close-ups. You know, Kalina tells Zoro, hey, you're dropping an elbow in this flashback. And in present day, we're able to have him drop his elbow. She's they're, they're fighting with swords, and she hits some he goes flying in the air. He goes in present day, in present day, he goes flying down the well. So it was just a perfect chain of events in editing that I got really excited about while we were pleased to go. It's made for a great collaboration. We got terrific notes from our showrunners, Matt, uh, Matt Owens, uh, who worked with the Shield, Steve Maeda, and ultimately Oda, who has a great story sense. He just knows his characters inside and out. Great, great. And then that was actually going to lead to another question why you mentioned the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Can you tell us a little about your work on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., maybe some particular stories that interested you as well, or moments that you found in the editing room that were... Well, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, I was on that show from the pilot... You did a lot. I'm sorry? You did a lot. I did a lot. I did 40 episodes. I was uh, seven seasons. Uh, we were at, at such a great group of people. Uh, Jed, Jed Weed and Marissa Tantrum, um, the showrunners Jeff Bell, Jeff Loeb, uh, Gary Brown, um, and we just had, it was just fun. Every day was fun. Every episode was like something new and different. Uh, especially towards the end, you know, while we were in the early days of S.H.I.E.L.D., that is happening in the movies. We were tied into some of these stories, and that was a lot of fun and exciting to be a part of the stuff. And then as the show progressed, we started to deviate and do our own thing. We did Ghost Rider, which was just so much fun. It was the Rodney Reyes version, so it was a little different than the Nicolas Cage. We had the we had the car, and you know, I, I remember before that season began, I ran out and bought the because I wanted to see what, what was happening. They had this big sequence of car flipping up in the air and doing this amazing stuff. And then about a month later, I'm getting footage for of that exact scene. And it was just a lot of fun to put together. It was exciting. It was just so much fun. And the visual effects, the visual, I'm good friends with the visual effects supervisor, Mark Kopak, and everything was just in it. Because that was a really tight schedule, and we were just working really fast. Everybody was collaborating publicly. And that, that Ghost Rider arc in particular, an extremely good arc. It was just a lot of fun. You know, season five, we had to cut to the future, where, you know, world, the Earth is destroyed, and we're dealing with the creep. It just was epic. Every day was just epic. Every episode was just epic. 
were and you were making these little Marvel movies and exactly we just had fun. Exactly, it was just a lot of fun. When that see when that show came to an end, we were really sad to say goodbye. I think we would have liked to have stayed there for a lot longer, but you know it was tough. What is the what's the timeline for for working on episodes like that? I mean, you've got to have like so much that goes into it and so little time to get this done. It was short. I mean, it sounds really intense. A few months, I said. Really? Okay. Sometimes even less. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was intense work, fast paced, but we had such a great team of people. Uh, and it was just a pleasure every day to come to work. And who inspires you in this industry? Who do you admire? Well, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I, I was a comic book uh, collector, Batman, Superman, Spawn, I, you know, I just went through my old comic books, I found my Spawn 1 still autographed by Todd McFarlane, I remember, oh. I remember skidding that sign, awesome. I had Spawn 4 with the coupon in it, that, that sign, and I kind of put these in a box and I protected them and I forgot about them, and I, you know, many years later, now I'm a comic book, I'm working on comic book shows, that's kind of cool to see all that stuff. You know, I, I think about, like every kid, I wanted to be a director. I wanted to be a director at home. Right. And as I became more uh, more in tune with filmmaking, I fell, into, I fell in love with the art of editing. And I remember specifically watching movies like JFK. Mm. And I remember watching that. Was, when that movie came out, I wasn't super familiar with what happened with JFK. Okay. And I watched this movie, and I thought, this is a horror movie. This is terrifying. And I realized what was really scary to me, besides the subject matter, was the editing. Yeah. It was it was an incredibly fast-paced editing. And I didn't really understand what that was. But I knew there was something there. And it took a number of years to really become educated about what I was experiencing, what I was looking at. And it was just, like, the editing can control your feelings, it can control the pace. It just controls everything. And it's, you have to be aware, in my opinion, as an editor, you have to be aware of all facets of filming. You're, you're, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're moving scenes around, you're storytelling, you're script, you're, you, it's another rewrite yes. of the script. And that's why I love editing so much. And is there someone in the editing world that you admire in particular, or are inspired by? Well, you know, I, there's so many. There's, you know, yeah. Michael Kahn, Vernon Fields, and Coates, and the classic uh, Thelma Schumann. Uh, these are really editors that I just admire. Uh, Pietro Scalia, who cut Joe Hutchins, uh, James K. That really remind, that really introduced me to what this concept project really was. Uh, these are these are just people that really just inspired me. Uh, really showed me that there's. There's a, there's a, an art form, and uh, there's, there's reasons for making it. It's, it's not just cut to this for a yeah. reason. There's, there's, a, there's an emotional reason that you want to do this. And to me, that was what was most exciting. Great. Thank you so much for being Thank here you. with us, Eric. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the con. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.